Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. I'm your tutor, Disha. Thank you for joining me on an edutaining journey of looking at our body systems. Recall our last tutorial? Did you miss it? No worries. Just click the link below, like, subscribe, and share. Well, let's go have fun with the exocrine and endocrine system. Stay tuned. Now in today's tutorial, we're going to be comparing and contrasting the endocrine and exocrine system. We're going to be looking at the functions of some of the glands that makes up the system. And lastly, we're going to be looking at some diseases that might occur if these glands aren't functioning well. What is a system? Well, a system is made of cells such as alpha and beta cells, tissues, such as the adipose tissue, organs such as our pancreas, all working together to achieve a main body purpose. And in this case, to transport substances such as hormones around our body. For venturing in the exocrine and endocrine system, it is important that we establish definitions for two main terms, glands versus ducts. Now a gland is a collection of cells which secrete substances that will be introduced to the body's internal or external environment, while a duct is a bodily passage or tube which leads this secretion from the gland into the body's environment. Now let's start with the exocrine system. Now the exocrine system is made of glands with Ducts. And this is the main difference between exocrine and endocrine. And these ducts lead secretions from the gland to the body's external environment, such as body cavities like our stomach or our skin. Now, there are several glands in the body with ducts. But today, I'm just going to talk about five. Let's start with the skin. Now within the dermis of the skin, there are two glands with ducts, the sweat gland and the sebaceous glands. The sweat gland secretes sweat as part of the body's thermoregulatory and excretory purposes and the sebaceous gland secretes sebum which helps to lubricate our skin. Number two, the salivary glands. There are three major salivary glands in our mouth with exocrine functions. There are the parotid glands, the submandibular glands, and the sublingual glands. They all secrete saliva, which helps to lubricate our mouth, as well as secrete salivary amylase, which we know initiates the breakdown of carbohydrates in our diet. Number three, the cardiac, pyloric and fundic glands in our stomach. Now the cardiac and pyloric are exocrine glands which secretes mucus into ducts which really protects our stomach lining from the harmful effects of hydrochloric acid. Versus the fundic glands secretes hydrochloric acid and pepsin enzymes which function in digestion. Number four, the pancreas. The pancreas has acinous cells which make pancreatic juices, as well as epithelial cells which make bicarbonate. Now these substances will be secreted into ducts which will be led to the digestive cavity which will neutralize the acidic food coming from the stomach. Lastly, the mammary glands. Now inside our breast, we have mammary glands with ducts. They produce milk rich in all the necessary nutrients needed to nourish a young. Let's look at some diseases of the exocrine glands. Whenever we have an interference with the normal functioning of these glands, we might have problems arising. For example, whenever the mammary glands become inflamed, we have a condition called mastitis. 
Whenever there's inadequate amount of saliva being produced in our mouth, we have a condition called xerostomia or dry mouth. Whenever we have an inflammation of the pancreas, we have pancreatitis and the list goes on. Now it's time to talk about the endocrine system. Recall, we have just looked at the exocrine system that has glands with ducts that secrete substances in the body's external environment. Well, the endocrine system has glands without ducts that secrete substances called hormones in the body's internal environment. Let's just cement that. Now, what are hormones? Females, you know this, right? Males, no shade. Hormones are chemical substances that are made by the body that controls and regulate the activities of certain cells and organs. They are transported mainly in the bloodstream which they travel to receptors on target cells and induce a specific response. Hormones are the major pawns of the endocrine system. Let's talk about some glands found in the endocrine system beginning with the master gland aka pituitary the pituitary gland is located at the base of our brain it produces hormones that controls the other glands of the endocrine system as well as many body functions hence its name master gland there are two parts of the pituitary gland you have the anterior or front part or the posterior or back part of the pituitary. Now the anterior part of the pituitary makes hormones such as the thyroid stimulating hormone, which stimulates the thyroid, the adrenocorticotrophic hormones, which stimulates the adrenal glands, tonizing and follicle stimulating hormones, which has sexual functions, while the posterior part of the pituitary functions in making hormones such as oxytocin in labor and milk production and antidiuretic hormones in urine production. Number two, the pineal gland. The pineal gland is located in the middle of our brain which makes an hormone called melatonin. Now melatonin function in our sleep and wake cycles. Number three, the testes. The testes produce a hormone called testosterone, which helps in the development of the male reproductive tissues, as well as the male secondary sexual characteristics. Number four, the ovaries. The ovaries secrete estrogen and progesterone, which functions in the development of the female reproductive tissues, the female secondary sexual characteristics, as well as menstruation the adrenal glands so have you ever been chased by a dog <laughs> i vividly remember that moment in my childhood days the adrenal gland help us to overcome fight or flight situations in our lives now there are two adrenal glands in our body and they're situated on top of our kidney. Now within the adrenal gland, you have the inner medulla, which makes adrenaline, and the outer cortex, which makes corticosteroids, all functioning in the body's metabolic processes. Lastly, the pancreas. Now we have previously said that the pancreas was an exocrine gland. Well, it's an endocrine gland also. Specifically, the islets of Langerhans cells secretes glucagon and insulin directly in our bloodstream, which controls our blood sugar. Now, another important point to note about the endocrine system is that it's controlled by feedback mechanisms, majority of which is negative feedback. Negative feedback is a result of a process that stops the process from continuing. Take the pancreas for example. Whenever the blood sugar is too low, the pancreas secretes glucagon which raises the blood sugar. Whenever it's too high, 
the pancreas secretes insulin which lowers the blood sugar also important to note that whenever we have deviations occurring in these endocrine glands we might have the development of some diseases for example goiter in the case of the thyroid gland diabetes in the case of the pancreas addison's disease in the case of the adrenal glands sleep disorders in the case of the pineal gland and Cushing's disease in the case of the pituitary gland. We could see that there were differences between the functions of the two systems. If we lean towards the exocrine side, we could see that the function was primarily for protection, digestion, nutrition, etc. Versus if we lean towards the endocrine side, we could see that the function was primarily in metabolic processes of our body, um, growth, and sexual development. Thanks for joining us, guys. We have just completed another tutorial. We have looked at the endocrine versus the exocrine system. Remember to visit us on Instagram at the Genius JA and like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye.